Now that we've reviewed the completed Clombot robot, we now have to come up with a workflow as to the best way to build this robot. I'm looking at the base frame, so I'm just highlighting those components for you. I'm going to do that by starting a new assembly. Using the English template and a standard assembly. Of course there are no parts inside this assembly, so I'm going to place the first part, and this is what we call the grounded part. It has no degrees of freedom. And that's going to be the bumper 20 hole. I just need one of them, so that's okay. In the browser, you can see a little thumbtack by the bumper 20 hole. That also indicates that this is the grounded part. I've rotated that part around, and I want to make that my home view. That's the way it looks in the robot, so I think it's better that we set that up. Now that we have the first part in, I'm going to place the second part. That will be the chassis rail, 16 hole, and they're from the structure folder. We need four of them, but I'm just going to put one in for just now. Now when I click on that part, you can see these funny white dots, right? Those are what we call iMates. And an iMate is one half of a constraint, the other half being on the other part. And we'll see those in action right now. Without the iMates, to constrain these two together, what I would have to do is select faces, perhaps the top face to the underside face, the end face to the inside face of the other part, and so on. So it would take quite a number of constraints. I might use one of these four types, such as mate, angle, tangent, or an insert, and a different solution for each type. For example, with the mate constraint, I want to select the top to the underside, that end to the, f the face. So that's two already, and I still don't have this together. So let's see how iMates can help us. I'm going to click on the part. You can see those white dots. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see them later on. But those dots are one half of an insert constraint that I've added to each of these parts for you. And you can see the other half on the other part. Let's zoom in and see what they are. By clicking on that, we can see the circle indicating where that constraint actually is. Let's piece them together. Let's assemble them. So holding down the Alt key and selecting the insert, then releasing the Alt key, I can move that part around until I get the correct solution. Notice how it snaps to the correct solution. So you can just carefully move that around and get what you want. Hold down the Alt key, release the Alt key, move the part around, and in two steps, I have what would have taken probably eight steps using a fairly typical process.